A few months back, I went on a date with a guy who seemed familiar to me, but I couldn't put my finger on where I've seen him before. I assume I might have met him on a night out. It was a last minute thing, and I told him how I wasn't looking for anything, but it would be nice to hang out. That was a mistake. When I first met him, he seemed like an alright guy, but things quickly turned when we got to a restaurant. He didn't order, but I did, and he started saying about loving my curves and my body. I laughed it off, but I thought he was being a bit too forward. He could have put it nicely or kept that to himself. While having my food, he began telling me about how I was different from other girls because they don't give nice guys like him a chance. Red flags immediately going off, so I came up with a story that I could only be out for a little bit because my parents wanted me to dog sit. He bought it, but then proceeded to stare at my breasts and saying how he wished that he could see me without clothes on, even saying I should send him a picture. I told him I don't do that, and he was making me uncomfortable. He stopped, but then told me how he brought me a gift. He pulled out of his bag a bouquet of roses, which I guess I did think was sweet, and a bag of Tesco prawns. That confused me, and I burst out laughing. I asked why he got them, and he said he knew I liked tempura and prawns. But the thing is, I never once told him I did so alarm bells were going off again. My head told me to run, but I didn't want to be rude, so I stayed until the time I said I had to go. So I had less than an hour left. Okay, I can do that. He kept talking, but started to scare me because he started guessing aspects of my life, the school I went to, what I was like as a kid, and what I am currently doing. He got every part right. It scared me because... I had not told him any of this and haven't posted anything online about it. So I backed away and asked how he knew all of that information. Turned out his mother was one of my teachers in school and he asked her everything she knew about me and looked online for anything about me currently. I don't know when he asked her but at this point I wanted to get out of there and thank God for my mom. Not long after I got a text from my mom asking how things were. He didn't see the text but saw it was my mum and I just said, Oh God, my mom and dad got the times wrong for the picture so I have to go home now for my dog. I'm so sorry. The guy just accepted that and then started to walk me home. I said about only going halfway because I'm not comfortable with people knowing where I stay but he then started insisting. He then dropped the bombshell that he knew that I stayed on X such and such road but didn't know which house was mine. I told him that is really weird and that it creeped me out that he knew that. He claimed I told him, but I never tell people that. So I started to walk to the main road for my own safety, but he grabbed my hand and said he knew a shortcut. I told him I wasn't comfortable again, and he told me it was fine and basically dragged me to a quiet road. I was getting really scared when he stopped and shoved his tongue down my throat. I shoved him away and told him to stop it and he apologized. That's when I noticed a stranger walking a dog coming so I used that and said I needed to go and went to the main road. I thought it was safe, but no. The guy kept walking with me. I stopped and told him I wanted to part there and how it was nice to meet him again. He looked confused and said we have never met. He said he said about meeting on a night out just to get me to come. I then began saying, look, I have to go, when he cut me off, grabbed and pulled me near some bushes saying, before you go there's one more thing. I told him I needed to go and let go of me but he ignored it. The guy then pulled me, hurting my wrists and kissed me again. He saw the bushes and said about having privacy and I managed to shove him off and tell him no. He then grabbed me again and tried to take me to the bush saying, It'll only be a second, while I resisted. Some dog walkers came by and he stopped and pulled me to kiss me again, this time grabbing my breast. I shoved him and screamed, I said no, and just ran. My heart was racing, I was terrified. I thought he might have tried to do something to me. 
I kept looking back and he was nowhere to be seen. I ended up taking the long way home just in case. When I got in I just started to cry. I thought something bad would have happened to me when I got a message from another account. It was him. He said about how lovely it was meeting me and how it was the best date ever. How it was the prettiest girl he'd ever kissed and that he would see me again. Adding how he hoped I had a lovely time and that he showed me he was a gentleman. Then adding how he was on my road. I just hid on the floor for the rest of the day. When I looked at his profile, I remembered where I had seen him before. He used to message my old Facebook account years ago with weird messages and creepy edits saying how he loved me. This whole event happened within an hour and a half. This is something I didn't realize the severity of till I was older. My mom had left me and my brother home alone. It was midday. My brother was 12, maybe 13, so I was 9 years old. Watching him play Xbox in our living room, he had his headset on talking to his friends. There was a knock from the door on our carport. I run and answer the door without looking. It's a grown man I've never seen before. We are separated by the screen door which at the time was unlocked. He asks, Are your parents home? Horror washes over me. First of all, he's knocking from the carport which is strange in and of itself. A stranger would knock on our front door, right? And our carport is empty. We only had one car and my mother had taken it. This man knows that my parents aren't home. I'm afraid. I don't know why, but... I am scared. Immediately my brother in the other room comes to mind. I've never had a father figure. My brother has always been the one who has made me feel safe. The strongest person in the whole world. Someone who could protect me in any situation. How most people would regard their father, I think. I feel as though I can barely speak. Wide-eyed, I manage to stutter out, No, but, uh, big brother here... Without even a moment's pause, this man reaches for the screen door and starts to open it. Like an act of God, divine intervention, an arm reaches out from behind me over my shoulder and grabs the door. My brother pushes past me, holding the door, forcing the man back with his presence, out into the carport and closes the door behind him. The man tells my brother he was looking to buy some old swing set that was in our front yard at the time. My brother comes back in without saying anything to me, puts on his headset and continues playing. I sit down as well and continue watching him. I don't believe we ever told our mom. Luckily I never encounter this person again and it pretty much fades from my memory. But as I got older it became one of the scariest things that ever happened to me. When I was around 15, I lived alone in a two-story house. Although there were bedrooms upstairs, I would sleep on the living room couch. This was for two reasons. One, it was the central location of the house so I could hear everything. Two, it was equidistant from every exit. One night at around 2 in the morning, I heard somebody jiggling the front doorknob. It was a slow, cautious jiggle like they were trying not to be heard. When the door didn't open... They didn't stop. The jiggling slowly became less cautious and more irritated. They persisted for at least two minutes. They went to the back door, which was also locked. I didn't want to call the police because I was an unemancipated minor living alone. I didn't want to be placed into foster care and I didn't want my parents in trouble for neglect. Eventually, the jiggling stopped. I stayed up that night, waiting for them to try other entrances, but nothing happened. A few nights passed and I awoke to the sound of a door opening upstairs. The doors in the house would really stick so they took a lot of force to open. When you pop them loose they'd make a loud scrape, pop and shudder noise. At the time I would take sleeping pills, it made it really hard to fully awaken and I'd sometimes only awaken with sleep paralysis. 
I couldn't determine whether I dreamt the sound or whether I awoken from it. I started to fall back asleep and thought I heard the door close, like grinding of wood rubbing together. Then the sound of bed springs screeching, like weights were being shifted. I thought maybe somebody is homeless and they thought this was an abandoned house. I was super tired and wasn't sure if I was actually conscious. I fell back asleep and awoke to the feeling of somebody watching me. There were stairs parallel to the living room door and I could see them from the couch. Halfway down the stairwell I could see a long haired man crouched over looking at me. It was dark and I felt like we were both trying to verify what we were seeing. I kept a metal baseball bat by the couch and grabbed it. Slowly the man erected his body and without turning backed up the stairs. I just listened for him to leave or waited for him to come back down but I heard neither. It was like he just stood at the top of the stairs waiting for me. I didn't go back to sleep. I heard nothing even until sunrise. When I left for school that morning I questioned what I'd actually experienced. I had my boyfriend over later that evening. As we approached the house, he said, Hey, your window's open. I looked and the room to the sticking door was wide open. I told him what I'd experienced the night before and he helped me check out the house. After finding nothing, I closed and locked the windows. I figured it must have been a hobo. Once they realized somebody lived there, they left. I still stayed there that night, but I didn't take sleeping pills. I awoke to the door opening again. This time I knew it was real. They knew somebody lived there, but they still returned. At this time in my life, I had little value for my life. I had no fear of death because I knew where I'd go. I decided that I wasn't going to hide in my own house. I got my baseball bat, turned on the lights, and went upstairs. I yelled something like, Listen, buddy, I'm coming up. Be out by the time I get there. I heard nothing and prepared for the worst. I checked the rooms and the closets, but I found nothing, and the windows were still closed. I checked the downstairs and found nothing as well. I felt pretty silly after finding nothing, but still stayed up that night. I got ready for school the next morning and saw that the window was open again. It occurred to me that I hadn't checked under the beds when I'd done the search. I didn't have my bat with me and bailed. To think that intruder was possibly hiding under the bed as I searched the house is spooky, but I'm partially relieved that I hadn't checked. If I'd bent down and come face to face with the man beneath my bed, the story may have ended differently. I had just turned 22 and was working F&B. They had just promoted me from server to behind the bar and I couldn't be more excited. Now being a young, somewhat attractive female in F&B, you get a lot of creeps. You learn to shrug them off almost as though they're not even being a creep though. But that said, it takes a lot to creep me out. So I'm being trained behind the bar one night when this random guy comes in. I say random because you see the same people every day. He's probably late 40s, or early 50s. He sits down, asks me some questions about some beers, and makes some general small talk. His first impression was polite and kind of chatty, but nothing out of the normal. He finishes his food and orders another beer, then his demeanor changed. He made a comment about how cute I was after I did something ditzy or clumsy. I laughed it off and made a dumb blonde joke. Then out of nowhere... I could just kidnap you. Excuse me? Okay, that's awkward, but I don't want to make this a more awkward situation. I should joke it off. My dumb self responds, I'm working at a double. I wish I could get kidnapped. I messed up. What are you doing after work? When do you get off? I immediately become short with him, shutting him down name dropping my boyfriend left and freaking right. When I started name dropping my boyfriend, he made it very clear that my boyfriend was nothing, that my boyfriend has nothing on him, etc. I was becoming rude at this point to this man and he was still not letting up. 
I tried just ignoring him and staying away from that general area of the bar, but he would not stop calling me by name. When I go to check on him, if he didn't need anything, I'd walk away. But he wouldn't let me out of his sight, and his stare was predatory, and I kid you not, he would literally lick his lips when I looked his way. I finally admitted defeat and told the girl training me that I couldn't serve him anymore and that I refused to interact with him. She took over and anytime he tried calling me over, she'd cut him off and be like, well, how can I help you? I figured he got the hint because he stayed glued to his phone and avoided looking at me or anyone else. I got cut maybe an hour later. I grabbed my car key and walked out the back door and started walking to my car. I wasn't worried about anything until I started crossing the street and the voice inside my head started screaming, Run! I took off running to my car, but since you could see my driver's side from the back door, my inner voice told me to climb in through the passenger side. As I'm trying to climb into my driver's seat from the passenger side without being seen, I come to the realization that I'm being ridiculous. So I pop my head up and guess what? This idiot is right in front of my car. I almost ran him over, hauling it out of that parking lot. So that's the end of the story, right? Wrong. The next night I'm helping my manager with a catering order that's about to be picked up when the phone rings. So, I answer the phone. This is Fat Granddaddy, how can I help you? Hey, it's Greg. How are you, baby? Uh... Fine. I had no idea who it was at this point. I'm glad you answered the phone. I wasn't sure you were working tonight. Uh, you don't know who this is, do you? No? It's Greg from last night, remember? Oh. It finally clicked and I looked mortified and my manager was mean mugging me because I sounded like an idiot and we didn't knock this order out. So did you want to place an order to go? No, baby. I just wanted to make sure you were working. I'll see you soon. I hung up and my manager was like, what was that? So I told her everything about the night before. When he shows up, she had me point him out to her. He sits at the bar, tries to speak to me right off the bat, but the bartender intervenes immediately. Within five minutes of him showing up, the manager was not digging the vibes from him and the way he was watching me. She calls me over and tells me she's sending me home early. Now a restaurant has an upstairs for storage and offices. There are two staircases, one towards the back of the restaurant and one to the front. She tells me to grab my stuff and go to the back staircase. I totally understood what her plan was. I ran up the back stairs and halfway down the front. If you stand about halfway up the front staircase, you can pretty much see the whole restaurant, so I peek my head and my manager immediately waves me to hide back upstairs. A few minutes later, a kitchen guy comes up the stairs and grabs me and we go out the front door, and he walked me around the block to the back parking lot to my car. My manager caught me in the parking lot before I left. Basically, since the back staircase is near the back door, he thought I left and went to follow me out again. My manager confronted him, and he was banned. And thankfully, I haven't seen him since. I met a guy online back in August of last year. We immediately hit it off. I was reluctant to get in a relationship, though, as I had been cheated on a few months prior and lied to that entire relationship. Catching feelings for anyone again scared the life out of me. But this guy was so sweet and nice that I trusted him and was willing to risk it for him. Skipped to mid-September, we had both admitted feelings for each other a while before this, but he was reluctant to ask me out. I wasn't sure why, but I figured he was just waiting for the right moment, which he was, because he slipped that his birthday was coming up and I pointed out how come he's turning 19 and still in high school. Then he said that he isn't 19, he's 17 and he's turning 18 in a few days. Uh, this made me mad because although we've never actually been intimate, I'm 18 and I don't like being lied to. 
We both met in a place that's only for 18 plus people. He pointed out that I never directly asked him his age, I just assumed because of where we met. Despite this, when he turned 18 and asked me out, I said yes. We lasted less than a month. He would start fights every single day over the dumbest stuff. If I took over 10 minutes to reply, he would get mad at me and told me I needed to tell him when I was going to do stuff so he wasn't waiting for my message. He got mad that I'd been in relationships before him despite none of them turning out good. So, I broke up with him. I thought maybe in the future things would stop because this is his first relationship and he was just inexperienced. I told him multiple times, calmly, that things need to change and once the fight stopped we can try again. But they never stopped for more than a few days. One time he lied to me, saying some girl had been flirting with him and asked if he was single or taken just so I'd confirm our relationship, which I didn't because we weren't dating anymore and he got mad. I pointed out it was obviously a lie, but he insisted it happened. Only later that evening did he admit that it was a lie. Eventually, I shut off my Snapchat map because I didn't want him knowing where specifically I lived and he got mad that I didn't trust him. One of my best IRL friends messaged me asking why he was requesting to follow her. I checked his Instagram and he had started following everyone who was following me. I told him to unfollow them because he doesn't even know any of them and it's kind of weird. He got mad, but he did unfollow them. Two weeks ago, I woke up one morning and he told me we needed to talk. He asked me why I've been lying to him, why I've been hiding things behind his back. I asked him what he was talking about because I never lied to him, nor hid anything from him. He says he's been messaging all of my friends on Instagram asking for information about me, who I've dated who I've been doing, etc. He asked me why I've been FaceTiming people behind his back, not telling him everything about my past relationships, etc. I don't know if I was more shocked at the fact that he did this or the fact that these people were actually giving him information about me. I never did anything behind his back, though. And the only person I ever FaceTimed FaceTimed me first randomly and for 30 minutes just to play 8-ball on iMessage. He even mentioned talking to people who I haven't talked to in months. He also made alternate accounts, befriending people from my past, voice chatting with them, playing games with them, all just to get info from them about me once they opened up. He even mentioned that my ex had messaged me, which I never told anyone, so I have no idea how he found that out. My Snapchat kept logging me out, so I think he hacked into my Snapchat to read my conversations with people. He found my old Reddit and went back two years of comment history to get mad at stuff I've said in the past. When I asked him how he found out about my one ex contacting me, he said, You don't deserve to know, before proceeding to block me on everything. The day after he emailed me saying that there's nothing left to say, we're just acquaintances now, etc., etc., I told him, Nah, we aren't even acquaintances anymore. He's just some crazy dude I dated. And it's his loss in the end, because he caused this by doing detective work, as he liked to put it. He said he did all this, and he was curious, not that he didn't trust me, and he found lots of stuff he didn't want to. I guess about my past relationships, because that's all he ever mentioned. His little tangent went on for quite a while, saying he's my loss, and he could have made me happy, and blah blah. I told him he never could have made me happy. His money which wasn't much, maybe, but not him as a person. Not since the first fight started. This took place maybe around the age of 13. Let me set the scene. I had my first serious boyfriend, Sam. Sam was a nerdy kind of guy. We had met at church. When he had asked me out, I was over the moon as another girl had been talking to him at the same time. I was flattered that he had chosen me. At the point in time this story takes place, I was having a lot of issues at home. I had attempted to take my life during my relationship and had a lot of issues with self-harm. My relationship with my parents was terrible. Still is. That probably explains why I never told them any of this. Besides my personal problems, I'd say the relationship was running smoothly, 
until Sam came into contact with Allison. I don't recall exactly when or where Sam met Allison. I believe it was at his air cadets. It's almost like she just appeared. Whenever Sam and I were going through a rough patch, he would talk to Allison and she would console him. It made me really uncomfortable at the time being a jealous 13-year-old. Our key communication was over Skype as he lived a good 40 minutes away from me. On average, I saw him twice a week. Once on a Saturday in which I would catch two buses to his home. The second being at church on a Sunday. He would often tell me stories about his long conversations with Allison. How she was hilarious, but she didn't like me, although I had never spoken to her myself. I assume this was due to him mainly speaking to her during our childish arguments. I first came into contact with Allison during an argument with Sam. We were bickering about something unimportant and a message popped up on my Skype. It was from Allison. I don't recall what exactly the message said as this was in 2014, but I tried to gain access to my old Skype to go through the messages but have not been able to. But I do remember her insulting me repeatedly and saying I didn't deserve Sam and I should have died in regards to ending my life. I responded harshly, telling her to screw off or something of the sorts. Was it polite? No. I was extremely standoffish at this age. My response seemed to anger her. I was bombarded with call after call. I declined every single one. I reported to Sam what had gone on and he said he had told her to leave me alone. All was good for a while. This didn't affect me too much. This was semi-normal for me as high school relationship drama was almost an everyday occurrence at my school. Looking back on it, Sam was almost definitely cheating on me, but I was too naive and in childish love to care. My second incident with Allison was on a summer afternoon. I was relaxing on Sam's bed after an afternoon of messing around. He had gone to complete a chore in the kitchen and had left his computer on. I decided to check my Facebook and went to log in. On the screen was a chat with Allison. Being curious, I scrolled through the chat. I was greeted with an onslaught of naked images of her. This started a huge fight, as you can imagine. Sam said that she was just a jealous stalker girl. My third interaction with Allison was at my local library. Allison must have been 16 as she was completing some work experience at the time. I have and still am an avid book reader. I was there with my mother and sister when I saw her at the counter. She stared me down and it took me aback as I didn't recognize her to begin with. It then clicked. I was more annoyed than anything. I didn't pick up a book instead of opting to hang around my sister as she checked some books. Allison's eyes never left me. The time came to leave as mum was renting the books out, she made small talk with Allison. I was surprised at how polite and well-mannered she was in comparison to the girl who had messaged me. I began to feel guilty for the way I had responded to her. Once at home, I hopped on my phone and wrote a message to her, apologizing for the way I had spoken to her. The message I received back from her was a different tone altogether. She started listing all these terrible names. She said I had no right to date Sam, and all I brought him was misery. This time her words really did affect me. I called Sam and begged him to never contact her again. I remember vividly sobbing and crying for hours. This happened a couple more times each time escalating in severity. Threats to beat my lights out were sent. My mental health was greatly affected. I wasn't afraid of her, but more upset at the things she said. I never took a single threat seriously. To this day, I have no idea why Sam stayed in contact with her, and I began to avoid the library. My relationship with Sam continued. One day, I got into a large argument with my mother and called Sam sobbing. He consoled me and told me it was going to be alright. Impulsively, I decided to go for a run, leaving my phone at home. I wanted to be out of the home. I was gone for maybe an hour or two. I returned home to an onslaught of messages from Sam deeply concerned for my well-being. I apologized and explained the situation, a reminder this entire time that I had not blocked Allison. She messaged me with the usual dribble. I was so used to her threats at this point it hardly fazed me. The same threat happened again. 
I'll beat your lights out. Calling her bluff, I replied, Well, go on then. You don't even know where I live. She replied with my address, and my heart skipped a beat. All the threats of violence were all too real now. I remember shaking uncontrollably. I sobbed down the phone to Sam. I begged him to block her and never to speak to her again. He continued to speak to her, although I never did. New girls appeared in her place, but none were as invasive as her. We ended the relationship after a year and a bit. In one of the messages I sent to him regarding our breakup, I spoke about Allison and his stalker girls. It's been a long time since then. Sam and I occasionally speak, and I'd say we are on good terms. He's in a band, and I'm studying still. At the time, I didn't realize the severity of her actions. The fact that she had gone onto the computer base at my library and searched for my address didn't pass my mind until many years later. It still sends shivers down my spine. What would she have been actually capable of doing, I'll never know. I truly hope no one finds out. I tried finding her online out of curiosity, to no avail. If she was capable of that amount of calculation at 16 years old, I wonder what she was capable of now. I hope this serves as a word of warning to parents to look out for their kids. I know this story may not be as severe as many on this subreddit, but I thought I'd share this terrifying tale. This happened back in 2009, but after finding this sub, I felt compelled to share. My husband and I were 21, just moved into our first apartment, and I was about six months pregnant. The small one-bedroom apartment we found wasn't one of those nicer, corporately-owned communities. It was more like a slumlord situation, but rent was cheap and we were just getting started in life. A little backstory. The city we were in was still close to family and my husband had a great aunt we knew lived nearby. She was one of those family members we would only see at big family reunions, so it wasn't like we had a close relationship. As a great aunt, she was one of like 13 children, you know back in the day when everyone had a thousand kids, and she had been married for many years with four of her own children. They were all mostly grown up, but being that this was over a decade ago, her youngest was maybe 16 or so at the time. We hardly ever saw him at reunions because he was one of those gang-banging kids that was always getting into trouble. Apart from his poor choices, he was born with a very striking facial deformity that really gave him a unique appearance. We'll call him E. So we had just moved in two weeks prior to this incident. I was only working part-time, so I came home early in the day and continued to unpack and organize until my husband got home in the evenings. Our then-English bulldog was my faithful companion, and although they have a lazy stigma, she was a great guard dog. So it was early evening and there was still light out when I started hearing banging or prying of some sort coming from the back of the apartment where our bedroom was. On the other side of our bedroom, the back wall faced the parking lot, so we got a significant amount of noise when people came and went. At first, I figured it had to be a gardener or someone loading things from their car. As the noise continued, I realized it was right up against that wall. I peeked out our window, but due to the angle, I really couldn't see much. This noise obviously aggravated our dog, who wouldn't stop burfing. You dog owners know what I'm talking about and it was starting to make me scared. Cheap rent came with some shady neighbors, and we quickly realized this wasn't going to be a long-term residence. So, this noise continued. My dog continued to burf, and I was getting freaked out because I couldn't see anything outside our window, and I didn't have the guts to go investigate. I was really pregnant, and I don't like running even when not pregnant. Finally, my husband made it home, just as it's getting dark, and at this point, I hadn't heard the noise for nearly an hour. Of course, I tell him right away that I had been freaked out for the last few hours because of banging, prying, and moving going on outside. So yes, he went to investigate and came back saying nothing seemed out of place. Later that same night, we had made dinner, eaten, and my husband was shaving in the bathroom getting ready to take a shower before bed. 
Suddenly I hear him yell, Hey! in the deepest booming voice I had ever heard. I come quickly running to the living room and I see my husband and his boxers stretch from just outside the bathtub with both his hands on the small windows still inside the shower and tub. I ask him what happened and he turns with an alarming look on his face and says, Someone's cut the screen. I had chills go straight down my spine and was basically frozen. He yelled for them to get out of here when some more movement started happening and he slammed the window shut and locked it. This is the uncomfortable part. As soon as he turned around again, out of breath, he says to me, That was my cousin E. I was so shocked. I asked him if he was sure and he says he could recognize that face anywhere. And then he started questioning what the odds were that E recognized him. And to this day, we really didn't know. Immediately following the incident, we had the manager replace the screen and I placed a dowel in the window to keep it shut. We lasted nine months in that complex and will never rent from a slumlord again. We have also not seen E since even before the incident at a family reunion. About two years ago, we found out he had been incarcerated and isn't due to be released until 2022. We don't know what the charges were. The family keeps the situation hush-hush, but I truly hope we don't ever see him again. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video and join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, dowels are not towels.